Imagine one day while heading to school, you end up finding a paint book titled The Dragon Plate Skirt Note. You pick it up and later realize if you write anyone's name on it, you'll be able to do anything you want to them, including attacking what's behind the dragon skirt. Unfortunately, there's a catch to this book. It will only work and activate if you get a glimpse of your target's dragon undies, then write their name down afterwards, allowing you to fully unlock the powers of the book. So the question is, what will you guys do if you stumbled upon this power? Well, let me tell you what this guy would do because this boy is the ultimate supreme sussy baka in all of anime. This dude is like the reincarnation of Light Yagami, however, he looks more like L and let's just say he's going to speedrun transforming from L to W real quick. Anyways, this boy's name is Yowook and he's never experienced action before in his life and the closest action he's experienced is playing Street Fighter. So he's your pretty lonely and frustrated guy, but one day, he finally gained a friend from the opposite gender since he keeps passing by this one girl near his house at night. She loves spending time at the swings, so one day while bored, she called him over to talk and ever since then, they've been good friends. Regardless, things are about to change quickly as Yowook is able to get a glimpse at her precious dragon skirt after falling from her swimming way too high. And instead of helping her get back up on her feet, he freezes and stares as he knows his time has finally come to unleash his own dragon sword to vanquish his first ever dragon. But then he hesitates, since he knows he could write her name down in a living wild book. But what if the book is just a prank, bro? As he continues staring like a hawk, his heart starts to beat rapidly as he doesn't know what he should do. Eventually, he starts shaking after realizing he only has 30 minutes to write her name down. So he tells his only friend that he has an essay due in 30 minutes. As such, like a true bro, she asks for her drink back as she urges him to go finish his essay instead of wasting time with her. He then vanishes with the wind when the girl named Yura asks him if he wants to drink some more with her. But he apologizes, saying he just has to do something real quick and he will be back. Our boy then runs home quickly, almost running as fast as I do, and I really need to go to the bathroom. Upon arriving at his house, he does an impressive leap to jump his flight of stairs and barges straight into his room, only to stare at the legendary book before him. He then picks up the book and starts feeling some sense of embarrassment, as he can't believe he's actually going to try out if this crazy book actually works. Nevertheless, he whips the book open with such confidence and pen ready to go, so he takes a deep breath and starts thinking of his friend. And so he pauses for a moment, but we all know Yawook has already gone past the point of no return due to him already blushing with no one nearby. So like a true beta male, he scribbles her name inside the book and proceeds to write down exactly what he wants to happen to her. After writing down that he wants to deploy his siege battering ram to attack the walls of Yura directly at the nearby playground, he gets up and slams his desk as he tries to convince himself that this is all totally okay since she's a girl. Shortly after, he leaves his house with no dignity as he tries to convince himself that he is no loser that would attempt to use otherworldly powers to help him win girls over. Suddenly, while heading back out to the playground to meet up with Yura again, he notices some old geezer aggressively posturing himself in front of a random woman. Of course, instead of helping the poor woman out, he decides to activate his sneak level from Skyrim as our boy is just a soy boy. We then discover that the woman is actually not just any random woman, but she's actually Ummi, the neighbor of a goddess that is super kind and helpful to everyone. Yowa then eavesdrop on them, learning the fact that she actually has a husband, yet this weirdo named Jong Hoon is acting like some kind of aggressive beta orbiter. As our boy continues to watch in darkness, it's further revealed that Yumi is literally Dr. Disrespect as she too timed her husband with ugly Jong Hoon, although she claims it was all a mistake. Nonetheless, the turntables turn even more with Jong Hoon continuing to do a display not allowed to be shown. So let's just say he's a mega sussy baka. But since Jowook has a small crush on the neighborhood goddess, he musters up the courage to defend her, so he ends up going back inside his house. After reaching his front door, he opens it, and then slams it close super loudly so Jong Hoon would hear someone's about to come. He then continues down another flight of stairs by stomping as loud as he could, just to make sure he can alert Jong Hoon that a Chad is about to appear. In the end, it actually works as Jowook is able to find Ummi all alone without the man pestering her again. The two then exchange some formalities, but it's unfortunate that Yumi looks a little bit flustered after her encounter with Jong Hoon. Regardless, Jawook was able to perfectly execute his plan, although I did expect him to bring out a baseball bat instead, but I guess using his big brain works as well. With his duty now accomplished, he hurries back to the playground, busy wondering to himself if the dragon plaid skirt note will really work. Upon getting close to the destined playground, Yura seems to look like she's getting rocked by an earthquake, with a magnitude of 69, as you can see her tremble from miles away. However, as he steps onto the playground itself, Yawook is unable to locate Yura, causing him to feel some regret after running all the way to his house and back hoping he could actually score. 
He then smacks his head and begins to laugh at himself for actually thinking that some random book he found would give him the power to become a Chad, without being a real Chad himself. And so he heads home feeling defeated. Although he does attempt to hype himself back up by claiming that he at least got some exercise out of the entire ordeal. Meanwhile, it's revealed that Yura is actually busy walking around the block presumably back home, due to her feeling some super weird sensations she could not control while she was on the playground. As such, she had to leave the area and helped her get back to feeling like her normal self. But she feels embarrassed about the whole thing as she can't believe she, her mind was overrun by the thought of Yowook. On the other hand, Yowook finds himself still feeling dejected as he truly hoped the book was real, so he flops down on his bed and proceeds to go over the rules of the book. His mouth then opens upon discovering the fifth rule of the book, containing the fact that the effect of the book will wear off if he does not find his target in exactly 10 minutes. And so, our boy is jolted back to his feet as he can't believe he missed out on some fine print. Realizing that he missed out on 10 minutes as he was distracted by Umi and jong -hoon before he got to the playground. With the advent of the important caveat he missed out on, our boy decides he needs to try it out again while strictly following all the rules to make sure this book actually does not work. He's actually that down bad like jong -hoon, so he decides it's time for round 2 baby. And so this menace catches me off guard as well due to him deciding he's going to go downtown to look for the most beautiful girls around. Now his plan is literally legendary as it's all centered around him closely following behind, praying to the wind that a lucky gust of wind will come his way and lift up the dragon's skirts. So take notes guys as this dude literally contains the best genius I have ever encountered in my life, so long may he be successful. Anyways this menace did not realize it wasn't even a windy day to begin with, so in the end he spent his entire day failing his mission, hoping that some kind of wind would come out of nowhere. So I guess there's no such thing as a weather application or weatherman in this world, or maybe our boy is just too focused on thinking outside the box. Regardless, with our boy wasting his entire day, he decides to head home, but then he gets graced by a 10 out of 10 appearing out of nowhere going up a flight of stairs. It was at this moment he clenched the hardest, begging as loud as he can in his head, just for the gods to give him just one chance to take advantage of. Unfortunately, the girl was well versed in the art of protecting the dragon undies when walking upstairs, as she blocks the view with her own hand instinctively. And then it happens again and over and over, so our boy begins to lose his mind, unable to believe that girls are very well trained at such a thing. Nonetheless, as Yuwook continues his journey back home to being a lonely boy, he becomes self-aware and realizes that he's turned into the man he despises the most, the legendary pervy sage. Upon arriving back home at the compound he lives in, he tells himself that it's maybe time for him to stop cosplaying as his most hated shinobi. However, Yumi comes out of nowhere to greet him and calls for his name while holding some groceries. He then opens the door for her like a true gentleman and even allows her to go first, but let's just say our boy knows exactly what he is doing. As he shadows her from behind like a ninja, he uses some math he learns from school to triangulate the perfect spot for him to stand at to see if he can formulate some dragon undies. In the end, his calculations were correct, allowing him to witness some greatness, as it was time for the boy to actually win at life for the first time. And so he quickly hurries by Emmy to say goodbye, telling her to have a great day, but excuses himself, claiming he needs to do an essay real quick. With his heart thumping and beating faster than ever, he swiftly drops his backpack and whips out the paint book of destiny. And so this lucker dog named Jawook has scored the greatest thing in life, so he uses it to clap anyone just like his hero Will Smith, but one of the rules states that he needs to see their dragon plate skirt, before anything he writes down actually comes to fruition. Then places the book on his table, but he's hesitant to actually go through with abusing his newfound powers as he doesn't want to become someone like Homelander. Unfortunately, it's too late for Jawook to return back to his soy boy self, as his mind already drifted past the point of no return while accidentally being on Kick.com. After finally going through with it, he slaps on some skinny jeans as the Jawook bulge of the Atlantic, will put the size of the Titanic to shame. Mere seconds after, Miss Yumi shows up at his door looking a little bit like a sussy baker prepped to enter the sussy time chamber with Jawook as she asks him if he has some time to spare for her. Of course her boy is all ears as this scenario is playing out exactly like the fan fiction he posts on Reddit all the time. He then quickly lets Ummi in and shows her to his couch, so he starts mumbling about how he's been a doctor, engineer, and astronaut at the age of 18 and welcomes her to his casting call club. But then the unexpected happens as Yumi starts bringing up how often she used to visit when his mother was still home, as it turns out she's literally twice over his age. It's okay though, his Asian dunk raisin and black dunk crack, so she basically looks exactly like a young beautiful goddess to Jawook. Regardless, our boy starts getting flustered while making some small talk with his brand new target, as his brain is going through teenage overload. 
Anyways, it's revealed that Joe Wook is by himself now in his own apartment, and he's able to afford it because his family is rich rich after Jeff Bezos gave his dad a promotion. After revealing that information to Yummy, I tell our boy to cut to the chase, so he drops the nuclear bomb by asking what she's doing here and what exactly are her intentions. Instantly, he gasps as his hopes and dreams get shattered, as she's actually here wanting to know if he saw her last night with the weirdo named Jong Hoon. With his shock reaction, she swiftly asks him to please be honest with her as she doesn't want anyone to know she's exactly like Jaden Smith's mom. As such, he succumbs to the pressure of having a girl in front of him so he spills the beans and confesses that he saw literally everything causing the two to look quite defeated. Eventually, with thunderous silence and awkwardness between the two, Yummy is forced to explain that Jong Hoon used to live in their basement, so she helped out with food delivery from time to time. Then one day, since he's Korean, Yumi discovered that the poor lonely boy was going to join the army soon to do his service, so she asked if he needed anything before he had to head off as she felt bad for him. She felt even worse when he started crying, so she told him that she would do anything to make him feel better. As such, she took advantage of her kind heart by asking if she could let him experience what's it like to be on top of her driving clouds, to which she agreed to. Unfortunately, things took a very suspect turn to which she could not stop as Jong Hoon was too strong, so the rest was history. Luckily for Yummy, the dude struggled to figure out how a hot dog works. Since he's never combined a hot dog before with a real life hot dog bun, so nothing happened more than Jong Hoon feeling like absolute dirt water. After retelling her traumatic story, she proceeds to hold his hand and begs Jo Wook with all her might to keep the entire ordeal a secret between them two as she doesn't want her husband to find out. In an instant, Jawook agrees as it turns out she offered to cook him a free meal whenever he wants, and Yumi also claimed that she would rejoin the server he's on for Roblox Fruits. With her sweetening the deal by becoming his e-girl on Roblox, Yumi promptly leaves the room but Jawook is still confused as he thought he still had a chance to score on her basket. Luckily for our boy, he regains some hope after he discovers that Yumi went to check out his kitchen as she offered to cook for him since Jawook always dines out. However, after making sure he had what she needed to cook for him, she merely just leaves and proceeds to thank Joe Wood profusely for being her accomplice, leaving our boy saddened that he didn't become a jackhammer specialist. As such, he instantly sits down and starts rummaging through all the pages of the book, wondering what the heck happened as he followed the rules of looking underneath dragon armor. Light Yagami then face palms as it turns out his prodigy, Riz Yagami, did not read every rule in the book, so it's revealed that his chance of rice cake smashing depends on how much he sees under the dragon armor. The more he sees, the higher probability and chance that his book will work with full effect, so he starts yelling in disbelief, wondering why there's so many rules he has to follow. Now that he failed his mission after targeting not only his next-door neighbor, but also his childhood friend, he decides to blow off some steam at the usual bench he sits at nearby his house. Whilst feeling all down on himself, some girl passes by as it's the scenic route due to the river right beside the trail. Joe Wook then looks up and notices that the girl had to tie her shoes, so he's gotten some prime opportunities to strike like a cobra, but he decided he wanted some prime time donair instead. Unfortunately, his day could not get any worse as the girl instantly turns after finishing up tying her shoes to be gets caught staring at some yummy rice cakes. So then she starts confronting him for being exactly like a Jong Hoon, but he deserves it as this dude's IQ level is lower than Iron's game sense. Nevertheless, Joe Wook discovers that she's known all this time that he's being a sussy every time she passes by this trail. But Joe Wook tries to reason within his head that she's only super extra today since it could be that time of the month for her. However, he suddenly becomes Rizmaster 9000 after apologizing to her, as our boy tries to make an excuse by claiming that she's too pretty so it helped with his stress to stare. And somehow it works as she stops being all mean to him, and she ends up even making some small talk by asking our boy what exactly is he currently studying at school. With him out of danger, he unfortunately makes a fatal mistake allowing his beta self to take over, so he randomly runs off mid-conversation back to his house. The girl then says, that's some super weird reaction if I've ever seen one. Fast forward to the evening, our boy decides to continue being pathetic at his local playground, still looking like he's down in the funk. Luckily for him, his childhood friend, Yura, shows up and slaps down some sculpted rice cakes on the swing nearby, where she tells Jia Wook that she's had a bad day at work. After our boy confides in Yura that he's been having a tough day as well, she whips out her credit card and hand it to him, only for her to order him to buy two drinks on her so they could cheer up together. As such, Jiwook gets up and finally becomes lively again, claiming that he can't say no to his super mama offering to pay for some lovely drinks. After buying some fresh banana milk, his sussy back tendencies come alive again, but he gets blocked near her basket as he realizes today is the first day she's seen her in pants. With him unable to check underneath the dragon plate legs, he stops sipping his drink for a moment as he's busy trying to battle his righteous conscience. 
Out of nowhere, he snaps back to reality after Yura randomly asks if he knows how to cook, so she blushes and asks if he wants her to cook for him sometime. Inenja says sure, as this boy is as dense as a bag of Doritos, not realizing that Yura has been trying to send him some signals for the past couple years. Unfortunately for Yura, Jawuk is too busy caring about destroying some rice cakes, using the powers of his mighty book when he could just straight up have it without needing any otherworldly powers. Regardless, the next day, he heads back home after school, still totally fixated on how he could get the legendary book to finally work. Upon arriving at the gate of his compound, he is greeted by a timely arrival of Unmi, so she even opens the door for him. But then, he finally uses his brain again, so he allows the goddess to go first, as he noticed she's wearing her dragon plaid skirt again, so his heart starts to beat relentlessly. Unfortunately, she outplays him without her even knowing that the kind-hearted lady tells Jiwook to go up first since she went up first last time. He then sighs and continues on forward looking like a total simp, so he starts thinking about how today is another disastrous failure as his tree still contains his original cherries. However, Jiwook wants to become a Sigma male, so he ends up turning around right before Yummy gets inside her house. He then rolls his dice and asks her if she could actually cook for him today, as she did promise she would cook for him anytime or any day he wants. As such, she agrees and begins preparing food for our boy, but Jowuk has entered his enlightened phase in life, so he's able to use his brain to make a mega plan using a fan. Now using what he learned during his science classes, he attempts to use his knowledge of physics to help him witness and learn more about biology. After correctly pinpointing and locating the most efficient area to place his fan on, Jowuk proceeds to sit down and continues waiting for the right moment while taking religious classes so he can pray to the gods. Eventually, the dragon plight skirt flutters in the right direction, but Yummy is a master class tactician, as it turns out the rice cakes are on full display due to her only equipping very tiny mini dragon plait skirts. Although our boy is able to see some glorious rice cakes in front of him, he realizes he needs to up the risk he's taking as this his one and only moment to shine to peak like Tom. Thus, he starts inching closer to her like a ninja, while cosplaying Spider-Man as he knows he needs to do a popping swing or else he's gonna get one tapped. Success. His plan works as he's able to finally discover the dragon string of Unmi, but she instantly turns around as she felt the cold air rise while feeling some weird hot air down below. It was at this very moment our boy knew he screwed up as he witnesses Yumi stare at him as if she's stuck in the Jojo universe. She then moves away from him, asking how he could do this to her, as this is an absolute betrayal of trust, exactly like when your jungler pings for a gank, but they went for blue buff instead. As such, she hurriedly attempts to leave his apartment after wanting to do a good deed for him by cooking Jiwook a meal. So she starts insulting the Warriors fan by saying Lakers and Six Baby. Nonetheless, Jiwook chases after her as he doesn't want to lose his only viable target within a few steps of his own front door, so he starts yelling for her to wait, while simultaneously showing what it looks like to be super desperate and lonely. Unfortunately, she slams his front door as hard as she could, so it gives her time to Naruto run down the flight of stairs connecting their apartments. It was at this very moment Jiwook knew he screwed up real bad, so he tries his best to imitate his idol, Jimmy Neutron, to come up with a genius plan to still smash the great walls of Yummy. After brainstorming for literally 69 seconds, our boy realizes he followed the rules of the clap book to a T, as he was able to successfully February peek behind the dragon plate skirts of Yummy. So now all Jiwook needs to do is write down what exactly he wants to happen to her, and it'll come true, just like in his most desired dreams. Shortly after finishing a very detailed paragraph detailing the sussy escapade he's about to go on with her, he turns around and sighs, hoping for the best as he's bringing back YOLO in 2023. To be honest though, big respects to our man Jawuk, as he knows he can't live here anymore if his plan fails as everyone will know about him being a supreme sussy baka. Nevertheless, he doesn't make a move after writing down her name in the paragraph, instead, he starts panicking as he can't believe he trusted a book called The Clap Note given to him by a god calling himself Light Yagami. However, much to his surprise, he hears someone knocking on his door, so he better hope that ain't the popo cuz behind bars, some dark yagamis will want to destroy his own rice cakes instead. As such, Jiwook rushes to his door with absolute hope in his clap note that it'll bail him out and come through like the Clutch King. And indeed it does, as Iumi actually shows up again, but she's looking a bit more flustered than usual, where she also looks like she swapped out her wardrobe for some more appropriate stretchy clothing. She then looks down at her feet, explaining to Jawuk that she never expected him to do such a thing. Afterwards, she starts looking him straight in the eyes exactly like a double-zoomed operator, where she tells Jawuk that since they live literally right next to each other, then it's wise for them to talk about it like adults. Thus, Jawuk finds himself sitting exactly where he was yesterday, but this time he's the one looking like Tyler won after a losing streak, as Emmy wonders why Jawuk would crawl on the floor to look for some dragon undies. 
However, with Jawook unable to answer her question, the turntable transforms into a sussy one, as Yumi begs the question if our boy finds her attractive. Now that was a massive bomb for Yumi to drop, causing our boy and myself to be caught in 4K, since we aren't even flying over Japan yet. Regardless, she continues on pestering him like some kind of preview of a cultured interview from another website, asking Jawook things like why would he even like someone as old as her? Of course, her age may be old, but it's plain as day to Jawook that everything else about her ain't looking like she passed her prime, but she's more like his prime numbers, causing Jawook to say nothing at all. Eventually, it dawns on Jawook that time is running out for him just like last time, so he needs to take action now, or else the clap note effects will wear off of Lummy, and she'll return back to reality. And so our newfound Chad takes the opportunity to compliment her like a true Sigma male, telling Yumi how she's more beautiful than anyone else he knows. He then stands up like a comedian and continues on an onslaught of unlimited confessions where our boy even tells her that he can't even control the machine whenever he sees her, so it goes chug chug more than usual. He then takes a page out of the famous bald man's playbook and continues his advance by getting closer to her inch by inch, but that's not the only thing moving inch by inch. Anyways, his heartbeat begins to pound faster than ever in his life, due to his confidence in the clap note oozing more than my jello, so he figures it must be working if his target has not run away yet. Eventually, he advances the charge forward onto more sussy things, where he ends up propositioning the idea to do some rice cake destroying, but Yummy is totally down for the new mission. As such, our boy flashes his best Reese God 9000 look he could muster, but Yummy is somehow not deterred at his look of awkwardness, so she actually allows for the entire ordeal to play out while busy thinking about her wedding day. Nevertheless, it's clear that although Yummy's team had a goalie in net, it didn't mean Jawook could not score an otherworldly from 40 yards out. Regardless, our boy stops drinking honey tea lemon with Yummy as he needs a second to take a quick break, as his soup is becoming more spicy than authentic Indian curry. But then it dawns on our boy that Yumi has been enjoying the entire movie. So now that Jawook is awestruck at the supposed power of the clap note actually working, he tells himself he needs to push on forward even further, as it's time for him to be the clap god. As such, he teleports himself to the entrance of the most dangerous zone within Minecraft, the Nether, as he wants to finally defeat his first ever Nether Dragon. Success as he's able to pickpocket the treasured Dragon Pyramids of Giza, while also fully unlocking the secrets behind the Dragon Plate Skirt. So Timba Land starts singing It's Too Late to Apologize. Anyways, long story short, everything is going according to his master plan thanks to his idol Jimmy Neutron, so he's able to finally star in his own action movie with a co-star being Yumi the Legendary Goddess. Now the crazy thing is that Jawook tells Yumi to turn around as he wants to play Leap Frog with her, whilst he's busy incorporating a fully grown banana tree plantation within the game, but she actually wants to play along as well. Nevertheless, right before Jawook proceeds with a hole-in-one, his conscious acts up as he starts thinking about how this would change all the dynamics within the apartment complex. For a very long time, Yummy has always helped Jawook out whenever she could, so he returned the favor as she was the ultimate nice person around the block. But now that he has the perfect opportunity to help make her flowers grow with some water infused with milk, he realizes everything will change upon starting up his battering ram. Nonetheless, after snapping back to reality, his soy boy self gets pushed to the back of his mind as the only thing he can now think of is to make sure his two-handed sword gets its first combat experience on the battlefield in front of him. Now at this point, let's be real guys, our boy is no better than Jong Hoon, but he's basically worse now, all because he could not control his inner light Rizgami. Hopefully El shows up at some point to send our boy where he belongs, but it's probably too late for that, as he's now slowly becoming more corrupted by the day, all thanks to the smash note. Regardless, Jawook the Corrupted finally enters the final phase of the siege, so he starts breaching the walls of Umi, while gaslighting her by claiming that it's her narrow walls that's the one pulling his siege weapons in. With the siege underway, the neighboring cities start to feel the earthquake aftershocks from the battlefield, so you can say the rest was incriminating history. So now let's skip to the part where Yummy gets up after the two finish their intense battle, where she ends up telling Jawook to make sure they keep it a secret between each other. Of course he agrees, so Yummy leaves the room without saying goodbye as she instead begged him to keep it a secret, as she claims she has no idea what the heck happened as her mind seemed lost in transition into the real world. Now that our corrupted boy has experienced his first ever successful mission using the clap note, he decides to whip out the book to study it even further to make himself stronger. Unfortunately, he learns the fact that after completing a mission by emptying a gallon of milk, all power is unleashed by the book from another world disappears and will no longer have any effects in an instant. As such, he flops onto his bed looking quite defeated, as is further revealed that everyone involved within the mission will retain every single memory, so he realizes he's screwed since how could he ever look at her from now on. 
But instead of manning up, he starts blaming the smash book instead of himself, showcasing his ability of still being a boy, as he claims that it was all the book's fault for putting him under a spell. And so he continues to face Palm while in the regret phase of his actions, but then he closes his jaw after realizing something. After hitting himself a couple more times, he gets jolted back up, and to his astonishment, he starts screaming out loud that the legendary mystical book actually works. So now the corrupted boy channels more of his sussy baka energy by grabbing and looking at the book like some kind of god, where he tells himself that if it works, it means he can literally target any one of his own wishes. Now fast forward to the next day while our boy is being chilling on his porch, he ends up seeing Yumi causing him to run down as fast as he can so he can catch up to her. Unfortunately, things are different now as she's been trying to avoid him due to remembering what occurred the night before where she's unable to fathom what happened due to some brain fog preventing her to fully understand. Regardless, our boy is totally clueless and unable to take any obvious hints to hearts, so he still tries his hardest to gank her and say hello. However, she continues ignoring him and instantly runs into her apartment while slamming the door behind her so she's able to avoid the surprise gank like a true pro. As such, Yugok is left feeling lonely and face palms thinking that he ruined the one relationship that was always good to him because he wanted to be a supreme sussy backup for just one night. Nonetheless, during the night, he runs over to the nearby park to sit at the swing he always does when he waits for Yura, but even his only friend doesn't show up as he gets ditched for Clash Knight on Valorant. And so he goes home totally defeated, even though he's now the strongest man on the planet with his newfound powers, but the only thing the clap note does is slowly corrupt him. He's then left feeling restless as his banana tree plantation is not gaining any new visitors, so his head starts to hurt due to the enormous hurdle he must now overcome, but he just tries to sleep it off. Luckily for our boy though, he ends up encountering Emmy the next day with her dragon plate skirt equipped so boss music starts to play as he knows he can use the book to its full effect again. And Sir Jawuk goes on the attack and begs Yumi for a chance to talk to her, but she swiftly takes up a defensive stance to prevent him from Ferrari peeking under the legendary plate skirts. However, our bro is now a menace to society so he crosses over her formidable defensive stance and forces a turn over, by successfully lifting up her basket and proceeding to take a peek. His face then says it all as the dude actually feels a little bit enthralled by the sudden adrenaline rush and happily tells himself mission complete. And instead of just explaining himself, he barges past Ummi and runs off into his room to make contact with his legendary power, but we can all see he's getting even more corrupted by the day. Upon making it inside his room, he begins looking like a studious student, but don't be fooled, this is the look of a beta male having to resort to other worldly powers as he always wanted to be a Chad. But of course, he's a fake one. He then instantly starts writing an essay about his greatest anime fantasy to build on a world where Light Rizgami keeps whispering in his ear to keep going. After finishing his study notes in world record time, he stands up and slams the book while claiming that his chances of his powers working today has a really high chance due to him being able to see the whole thing so he has high hopes for today. Shortly after, he creepily gets out of his room and starts standing outside his porch like the slender man waiting to see if his mystical powers are about to take effect. But as time slowly passes, our boy gets a little bit nervous as he starts thinking he learned the Iverse and cross over for no reason, and now Yummy will forever remember him as the biggest sussy boy ever. Now me personally, I would have already reported this guy to Riot Games as he's already ruined one game and he needs to get banned for taking the crown from light. Nevertheless, he continues to stand in front of door until his hopes and dreams get fulfilled as Yumi actually shows up looking like she's ready to charge like a bull. But much to his surprise, she wasn't here to make sure his banana tree plantation matured and blow fresh banana chunks into the sky. Instead, she shows our boy how she ranked first in the slap championships by connecting a perfect blow. Mere seconds later, she looks like she regretted the Chad decision to show him his place, so she starts apologizing like a true Canadian. Suddenly, Jiwook shrugs off the epic slap and proceeds to start dancing the tango with Ummi, which successfully led both of them inside his house. Upon entering inside the room, our boy actually tries to apologize, but this time he gets interrupted by an aggressive Ummi, so she sternly questions him about his weird actions and asks why on earth would he ever do such a thing in public or to anyone at all. But bro only gets flustered and replies by saying he missed her, so the bro really looks like he got some wild psychopathic tendencies thanks to the powerful clap note. Shortly after, he combos his crazy boyfriend look into the instant peck where Yumi actually reciprocates his abilities but pulls away when she sees the esteemed Jiwook Titanic stick out in the open ocean. Now with his banana tree plantation fully grown, he hopes for the best as he wants the banana tree watered by Yumi's fountain. So he asks if she's willing to go on a second cruise. A tremendous silence then ensues as the beta male stares on awkwardly, 
But Yumi says nothing while she actually ponders on whether or not she should give him another romantic chance. Eventually, the powers of the book take effect so our boy begins to lay down, just so he's ready for his headache to finally go away, just in time for Yumi to showcase her titanic breaching abilities, but she says the fresh papayas are off-limit. And just like a hazy fantasy dream, she proceeds by channeling her innate natural talent, but tells our boy to promise her he needs to forget everything after. And so the rest was history as Yumi fell for the trap of accidentally encountering a wild Pokémon named Jowook, and of course he tested the limits of his powers since Broads is savage. Now with the most sussy anime book lending its legendary powers to our boy, Jawook kept going like Thomas the Train, and he even became a music prodigy named Mozart, leading to a massive Umi water fountain leak. Jawook then continued his endless attacks on Umi's court, leaving the Lakers down 3-0, but then our boy realizes he can't stop the siege until the Lakers reverse sweep the Nuggets to cement the legacy of the squad. Anyways, Bro even sprinkled in some upside-down tremendous devouring of his favorite Choco Brownie Extreme Blizzard from Dairy Queen, but he's so lucky that he ain't lactose. In the end, Jawook's attack upon the walls of Yumi led to constant shockwaves hitting his bedroom, causing all his belongings to start falling off the shelves nearby, and even his brand new MacBook fell to the floor. We might as well call up the ghost of Mori to tell everyone that every time Yumi says this is the last time, then the lie detector clearly determined it was a lie. Regardless, fast forward to the end of the romantic video game where Jawook is the main villain, he ends up putting his full suit of armor back on in another room and stares at the book that has given him corrupted powers. Whilst busy complaining that he wants the third cruise to start, it finally dawns on him that he can technically call the captain to start the next voyage as he just saw underneath her basket literally a second ago. As such, he pulls over his small chair next to his table and begins to cosplay a student getting ready to study for their entrance college exam due in a couple weeks. Jawook then calls himself a genius, so he actually starts furiously channeling his inner fantasy recap writing skills as he becomes more bold with what he wants. After finishing his short story, Yemi timely leaves the other room, so our boy instantly boxes her out for the offensive rebound, but he fails to grab the attention of the basketballs. As such, Yemi expertly sidesteps his skill shot and tells Jawook that it's already time for her to leave as playtime is now over. Unfortunately for our goddess though, Bro's determination to score a hole in one at his second golf course of the day is through the roof, so he confidently tells Yumi he isn't finished being a sussy backa. This time, however, Emmy claps back and tells our boy that she actually meant it when she said it was the last time they would ever go on a cruise across the Atlantic. She then instantly teleported to the nearest airport as North America will lose their chance to get another spot for the Valor at Tokyo Masters, but Joe keeps trying to explain how much he wants to visit her aquarium. Unfortunately for our boy, she spells out N-O slowly and upon finishing putting on her shoes, she opens the door and leaves the premises. She then slams the door behind her, but Jawook is left behind totally speechless and confused as he thought he had a 100% mission completion chance due to him seeing the entirety of her basket seconds before. And so still absolutely bewildered, he rushes back to his table to study for the most important sussy Beka exam just so he can appease Lord Pervy Sage, but then he discovered his mistake. After frivolously studying the book like never before in his life, our boy learns that he messed up by missing an important rule stating that there's a 30-minute cooldown before he can use his powers again on the same target. As such, Jawook begins to yell whilst totally hating himself for not looking through all the rules beforehand so now he's lost the prime opportunity for two hole-in-ones. Regardless, he decides to leave the book alone for the time being and tells himself it's time for a nice nap for a child like himself. Fast forward to the evening, our boy finishes his nap and heads straight for the playground just so he could clear his head while waiting for Yura. As he waits for his only friend, he starts having a conscious and begins to think about his actions, leading to him trying to convince himself to stop being a sussy Becca. Now with his corruption levels slowly subsiding as fresh air seeped into his brain, he starts remembering the nice things Umi used to do for him before he became a student of the dark arts, so he starts blaming his mistakes on the book. Nonetheless, after finishing up using his brain, he gets up from the swing, totally convinced that he no longer will dip his toes on sussy jutsu just so he could get his farming skills up. Unfortunately for the world, right before he left the area, Yura finally arrives, looking totally like his favorite Whopper meal from Burger King, so he's instantly flustered at the sight of his friend. Shortly after, the two sit back down on the swings as Yura is quite worried that her friend is looking all down and about like a lost puppy, so she attempts to cheer him up. However, the first things out of his mouth and into the conversation is Jawook talking about how different Yura looks today, so he actually starts complimenting her for the first time. Jawook then learns that the only reason she looks all dressed up like a doll today is because it's Friday and everyone else at work always dresses up on Friday as they all want to sing the song by Rebecca Black. 
Nevertheless, like a true friend who really cares for him, she whicks out her card and tells our boy to buy anything to drink as it's on her. Without any hesitation, Jawook gladly accepts the offer and instantly comes back with Diet Mountain Dew, but the only thing he could think of it how beautiful his only friend looks tonight. Anyways, next up on his sussy target list is his one and only friend, Yura, where she basically likes him but our boy ain't chat enough to ever realizes he was into him in the first place. So now the only thing stuck in his mind is him trying to figure out how he can go about using the powers of the legendary book on Yura since Jawook is the biggest beta male around, and I ain't talking about beta fish. Nevertheless, he begins daydreaming about Yura while still right beside her, busy thinking about all the things he can do with her Disneyland as he wants to Mickey that mouse. Eventually, he snaps back to reality after Yura playfully pokes him and asks what the heck he's thinking about since it looks like he's totally immersed in another world in his head. With our boy unable to answer, Yura becomes a Stacy and randomly brings up the fact that she's straight up doing nothing on the weekend except play some Roblox, so she offers to cook him something at his place. Of course, our boy is next level dense, at least he accepts the offer, but he still has no idea that his only friend wants Skrillex to show up so she can bang a rang his beat drop. Nonetheless, fast forward to the next morning, Yura displays her go-getter skills as she's already out and about with Jawook shopping at the grocery store, making sure they already have all her required ingredients so Jawook can't cop out. It's also revealed that she's the sugar father of the relationship as she paid for everything and even paid for extra frozen food since she knows bro can't even cook an egg. Regardless, upon arriving at his apartment compound, he goes up the stairs first so Jawook messes up as he's already forgotten rule number one in the clap note, especially since Yura is already equipping the right plate legs for the job. Unfortunately, Jawook keeps fumbling the bag as he's too slow to get Yura into his apartment, so the two accidentally get ganked by Yumi wanting to go out to grab some food. As such, our boy instantly puts his head down in shame and clenches his fists, since he knows he screwed up real bad as he doesn't want either girl to have the wrong impression. Regardless, with awkward silence and staring contests in abundance, Yumi breaks the silence by straight up asking Jawook if Yura is his girlfriend. Now, of course, we all know our boy don't got game like that, so even Jawook gets shocked by her question, so he instantly blurts out that Yura and his relationship is not remotely close to that. Luckily for our sussy baker boy, though, Yura isn't too hurt by his comment, so she doesn't mind and continues with her plan of winning him over with some homemade food. She then decides to prepare some hot dogs, but little does she know she's not the only one already preparing a hot dog as Jawook is busy trying to figure out what he can do to score on her basket. As such, he tries to compliment her by calling her such a good cook, even though she only straight up cooks sausages, but it still leaves our boy amazed. However, Yura turns the conversation upside down on his head as she inquisitively questions him about Yummy, asking if the two are close since her girl detector is picking up something weird. She then makes a subtle remark sounding like an overly attached girlfriend by claiming that she thought Yummy was showing a little too much interest in him. Fortunately for Jawook, he's able to unlock a small part of his brain for the first time, so he's able to expertly deflect her questions by saying Yummy is old AF, and she already got a goalie in net for a very long time already. Nonetheless, Jawook's brain saves the day, so we fast forward a little bit with the two busy catching up at his table. We then discover that Yura has been to his place before a very long time ago, but our bro has zero memory of it happening since his brain is constantly filled with the image of the red carpet of losses on his match history. Of course, his IQ is super low, so he totally acts surprised once he learns that he invited her along due to Yura being friends with his childhood crush named Suwa. As such, she starts asking more about his love life trying to find out if bro is seeing anyone, but he accidentally lets it slip that he's basically the loneliest guy on the planet. Nonetheless, Yura doesn't care as she shows off her future wifey qualities, so she continues and has a blast teasing him about things when they were younger. In the end, the entire day passes by quickly without our boy making a move, so he decides to go out at night to think things through. After sitting down on a bench nearby a river, he whips out his notebook and stares at it, allowing him to figure it out himself that he's slowly getting corrupted. It's then revealed that Bro was camping her lane wanting to gank her jungle from beyond the arc the entire time, hoping that some generous airbender would suddenly help him out by sending a random gust of wind towards them, allowing him to witness some undies. Luckily, he's able to contain his inner sussy light Rizgami from coming out of its shell. But it was a hard task, so now our boy has to contemplate whether or not he wants to evolve into a Chad like a real man, or does he need a mystical book to assist him? Regardless, he starts to doubt the powers of the book since he doesn't even know if it truly works 100%. Since he begins to think the only reason it's working is because he's starting to be more straightforward with girls, so the book is only giving him some fake confidence. 
Now confused on what to do in his life, he lets out a big sigh and sits back down wondering if he really needs a book to score an appointment with rice cake smashing or will he keep being an extra virgin olive oil if he decides to get rid of the clap note. Nevertheless, Dark Riz Gaming has decided to call upon Lady Destiny to intervene, so our boy gets up to check on some weird mega sussy things he was hearing behind a bush, only to find two lovebirds doing the sussy dance past midnight. Joe Fan continues watching from afar as Bro blends into the bushes like the boss Solid Snake, starting to get fluster as Bro cannot believe his eyes. Eventually, the dude decides to activate his forbidden hand jutsu, allowing him to slowly creep up on the girl's heavenly gates, whilst Rock Lee is ready to open the eight gates at any time. Suddenly, our boy witnesses a dragon undy out in the wild, so his heart starts to beat super fast knowing that he could join in on the action romance K-drama occurring right before his eyes. As such, Dark Rizgami wins the battle by sending our boy back overboard into the dark side as he's already thinking about using the book to catch them off guard. Regardless, our boy gets Whirl pulled back into the corrupted world, so he decides to inch closer to his target to make sure things go according to his plans. And like a true villain immersed in his Elden Ring gameplay, he tries to sneak around the boss, but it somehow works as the two love birds are totally unaware Mr. Sussibaka is on the move. Eventually, our boy makes it literally right in front of the boss lair, where the two Randys are still busy cooking up some spicy Indian authentic curry, totally oblivious that their chef skills are intently being watched. Fast forward a few more seconds with the Ghost Reaper Pepper turning up the heat of the rice cakes to max, Jawuk successfully completes his mission as Bro literally got to see everything he needed for his legendary powers to activate using the mystical book. Nonetheless, Jawuk gets stuck in his front row seat, watching the Miami Heat try their best to stop the Boston Celtics from advancing to the finals, but the random Heat girl tells the Boston boy to slow down his leprechaun, as they could get caught even if no one is around. Anyways, unfortunately for the Celtics boy, he gets blocked by Anthony Davis, as the girl decides to hop off the gravy train and leaves for a moment since she claims she needs to find a bathroom. As such, the girl quickly heads towards the nearest rest stop, with her boyfriend busy waiting for her at a nearby bench, so she takes the opportunity to freshen up like Fabrice. But then, as the girl is busy putting on brand new makeup from her recent makeup haul, the legendary Slender Man appears from nowhere and ganks the unsuspecting mid laner. Of course, the mid laner gets absolutely terrified by the jump scare, since what kind of person would be out and about past midnight on the weekdays? Nonetheless, Mr. Jawuk does not back away from his target, and instead, he becomes even more of a sussy beka as Bro literally introduced himself as Chadmaster9000. Somehow, the short haired girl started getting flustered from Jawuk saying the dumbest thing ever, so it looks like the corrupted book has started to take effect. Luckily for us, our boy gets dumbfounded after she suddenly goes on her attack stance mode where she begins to rapidly insult him for being such a weirdo as Bro didn't read the signs. However, Jawuk convinces himself that he shouldn't get scared since he made sure he followed all the rules of the book this time so he can literally go forward thinking nothing can go wrong. After mustering up all this courage to continue on in his journey, he looks to the side and gaslights the Miami Heat by telling her this is bathroom is mainly for guys. After taking a quick look around, she realizes that Jawuk was a kind soul as Bro wasn't even lying as it's revealed that it indeed is the guy's room. As such, Jawuk tells her to stop playing dumb, since in reality Jawuk knew she would mess up as he's the one that wrote down how she would exactly walk into the guy's room by accident. And so the rest was history as everything started to unfold exactly how he wrote it down inside his powerful book. The dude then started to look like Summit 1G while he went as far as brandishing his brand new Japanese katana right in front of the audience, just seconds before the Miami Heat opened up their basket in anticipation for the Dark Rizgami to appear. Now I feel bad for the dude waiting outside as Bro actually gets locked out of the action without him even knowing. All because a book has turned our boy into the biggest menace in society. Meanwhile, Jawuk is left speechless. Unable to truly fathom how the book is really working as he's literally smashing a rice cake right now past midnight in a random rest stop which is beyond crazy. Suddenly, whilst the banana tree plantation of Jawuk is totally getting water and treated nicely with the help of his brand new rice cake assistant, the two hear three consecutive knocks from the door with a guy yelling for someone named Heron. But since our boy is not even close to being a Sigma male, he instantly turns around looking absolutely scared that it might be his turn to get clapped. The dude outside then continued shouting super loud, asking what the heck Heron is doing to take so long since he never experienced a one-hour Taco Bell session before. As such, both Heron and Jawuk totally stop in their tracks looking like they just got outed during their first ever Among Us match, and now they're stuck as ghosts. Eventually, the boy stops shouting for a few seconds and decides to proceed closer to the door, where he ends up relentlessly smacking the door, 
But then it turned out he was in the wrong area as he thinks Hurin is in the girl's room. However, he stops as it dawns on him that maybe his girlfriend is busy dropping a number 2 album, so he should probably stop trying to disturb the deuce from splashing. Eventually, the boyfie has to take a massive leak larger than the Niagara Falls so he goes on about his business. But this time he enters the exact same area Jawook was busy transforming his Decepticons straight into Heron's Autobots. However, the biggest anime menace is nowhere to be found, same with Heron. But it seems like the boyfie can smell something fishy is going on in more ways than one. It's then revealed that he barely missed the other two hiding in the stall doing the Spider-Man and Mary Jane special, since he's too busy thinking about all the rice cake smashing he can do to Heron later in their motel. Regardless, Bro takes a moment to go crazy like Kanye like he about to drop a new album, yelling to the world that he's going to destroy Heron's mind tonight so I can't tell if this dude is also a loser like Joe Wook. Anyways, she heard everything come out of her boyfriend's mouth, so now it looks like she might be thinking twice about the future but right now the only thing she could think of is wanting to make sure her own waterfall gets filled totally by the banana tree from Jawook. In the end Jawook was the only one between the two dudes that got to enter Heron's nether portal, leaving him as the last man standing after Heron could barely walk anymore. With the entire roller coaster ride now finished between Jawook and Heron, she turns tail after looking like she got snapped back to reality whilst ordering the menace to make sure he pretends he never saw her tonight. She then disappears into the distance waddling like a penguin due to the intense duel she had with Jiwook, who's also now flabbergasted that the effect wore off too soon. But like a madman, Jiwook raises the book like it's Simba from The Lion King, realizing that the legendary sussy book actually works as there's no way what he just did could be explained by non-sussy elements. Nevertheless, as Bro heads home super happy that life gave him the best handicap ever, Jiwook begins to think he's now a god and can make anything happen by just rice cake smashing anytime anywhere like Wilt Chamberlain. Upon arriving back home and going up the stairs to his apartment, the Sukuna wannabe discovers he's about to hit the jackpot twice in a row after accidentally running into an Yumi, just wanting to grab some milk at night. Jawook then tries his best to entice Yumi to enter the lair of the best Roblox player of all time, but of course she refuses as she just wants to go on her way. After even going as far as offering to watch the new season of Jujutsu Kaisen with her, she still refuses so he ends up grabbing some drinks to help her out. However, when Umi accepts the gift, Bro gets reversed ganked and instantly tries to clear up the fact that the girl from earlier is no way in any shape or form his girlfriend since she was just a childhood friend from back in the day. Regardless, she leaves without saying anything after Jawook tried to explain who the girl was leaving him frustrated that he wasn't able to strike the net of Yummy with his soccer balls tonight. With his milk machine now up and running after thinking about the things he could do with Yummy using the forbidden powers in front of him, Jawook begins to internally battle his own evil within him, knowing that he can't do a round 3 after promising not to do so. Fast forward the next day, and after actually winning against the true evil hiding within him, for the first time ever he did not decide to mow Ummi's front lawn, so he ends up going to school like a normal person. After finishing classes, he gets a surprise call from a super rich guy named Minsu, who happens to be holding a reunion for the boys back then since he's now getting married young. Soon enough, another rich and elegant person enters the room to join them, but this time it's a blondie shaped like she's about to be a yoga mattress for Jawook. She then straight up ganks Jawook and places a shadow over him, but the bro is not looking like his normal sussy self as he begins to sweat profusely. But my sussy senses are already tingling, so she better have the Hido Hido, no me anti sussy fruit when Jawook locks onto her. Her name is revealed to be Sowa, where we also discover that she has a thing for being that typical mean girl stereotype, so she always picks on Jawook for not being up to class, unlike Minsu, who's only rich because of his daddy's money. A flashback then occurs back to middle school, where we learn that Jawook had the biggest crush on Suwa, but she was the most popular and prettiest girl around the block. Even through high school, he had the unrelenting hots for her, but she never gave him the time to even accept his confession, so she started mocking and making fun of him. Now back to the present, she's still the same since she keeps being mean to Jawook even though it's been a decade, but this time she better watch out as Bro is now blessed by the pervy sage to attack any time.